no idea how any of this is going to go. There's like there's like multiple streams happening and I'm I'm on all of them. So you should see you should see my face in many different places. Some of those places where you can see my face are youtube.com slash at cjucfm you can also see it on my personal twitch channel twitch.tv slash miracle glue as well as instagram live where you can follow me at miracle underscore glue and if you just want to hear my voice you're probably hearing it right now on either 92.5 fm local white horse radio or at cjucfm.com we are running our fourth annual solstice fundraiser uh, and if you would like to donate to that you can do so by sending a little e-transfer to donate at cjucfm.com there we go um so hello everybody i hope you're having a good afternoon evening so far this saturday december 23rd um you are listening to uh, uh, my good pal Meredith earlier, who who had a lot of fun little skits going that uh, I was very enamored with, particularly um, the Lady Crestview and Lady Whistlebend. I I wasn't prepared because I missed the the intro to that, and when I turned on the radio, I just heard the Downton Abbey theme song, <laughs> and I was like um, blown away that I one heard it on the radio and two. Um, recognized it so a little embarrassing for me um but if you're just uh uh, tuning in today um this is i guess you could call it like part three of the midwinter madness special episodes that i started on my wednesday night show post-mortem which happens at 11 p.m uh, and then continued that yesterday with my seditious theater of love show um that happens at 6 p.m. And uh, because of the Solstice Runners, I have an extra two slots happening. So you get me twice today. One right now and then another time at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, so, yeah, there we go. Um, I had a thing going on yesterday. I would love to continue today if you're interested. But I would love to do some on-air confessions Um, So if you're interested in confessing live on air, you can do so by giving us a call at 867-457-2582. Maybe we can even have a little chat if you're uh, feeling brave. Um, And if not, um, I guess you could always submit a confession anonymously at milkweed.productions slash MMSTOL. And I will share those live on air. So, um, yeah, with all that being said, I just jumped right in. It's the first time I've ever had to jump in on a show with someone who was in the hot seat just before me. So uh, I'm going to figure out a, uh, a song here and uh, I can get myself sorted through that. Uh, give myself a second to figure that out again. And um, if, you, uh, if you see me live on either... Instagram or Twitch, you will not hear music. You'll just have extra me time, extra content, so we don't get uh, the uh, the video muted for uh, copyright damage or something. So I'm just gonna pick something. There's a lot of playlists here made by other folks. So let's say like, click something that uh, someone else on this show would have played. Like uh, we have some Pink Floyd and. Uh, I have a fun little Pink Floyd story, actually, that uh, that I can I can share after this. So, let's listen to the end of the Dark Side of the Moon with Eclipse. Yeah. 
And that was Eclipse by Pink Floyd. I promised you uh, a story about that. And some of you may know that. Some of you more um, uh, nerdy fans out there. You might know that uh, Pink Floyd was supposed to produce the soundtrack for the uh, unmade Dune movie um, by... Alejandro Jodorowsky. It's actually a really interesting documentary out there that you can watch about this unmade Dune movie. Um, it's called Jodorowsky's Dune. And he discusses a lot of the kind of like early concepts and his experience with attempting to make this Dune movie before uh, David Lynch uh, attempted to make a Dune movie. And uh, I highly suggest it. It's very interesting because a lot of the concept uh, art made for that movie as well as um, a lot of the um, the team that, that Jodorowsky pulled together to make this movie ended up continuing to work in film and a lot of those concepts were reused and actually had like a massive impact on, uh, on, on sci-fi movies past that date so like we wouldn't have the the visual style of star wars or um the alien franchise um without the the unmade concept uh movie of, of Jodorowsky's dune um and pink floyd was supposed to score that there was a, a nod to that history in the first trailer ever released for the newest set of dune movies um in the first trailer teaser trailer they had um that song playing in the background um so anyway with that being said welcome to the show everyone um I don't know if y'all can hear me on the the many different streams that are happening uh, because like I don't get a I don't get the chat windows <laughs> for all of them so I don't know what's happening. Uh, maybe you can submit a little confession at milkweed.production/mmstol to let me know um, if that's happening properly or not. Um, Otherwise, you can just submit a confession and tell me a fun little story about yourself or something that you're guilty of. If you want advice, you can get that there as well. Um, would love to hear from y'all. And if you're feeling particularly brave, you can confess to your mother or even request something of your mother. Ask me a question uh, by giving us a call live in the studio at 867-457-2582. Uh, yesterday, we had some really incredible confessions uh, come in live. Uh, someone shared a story about some uh, Freudian slips in their university classes with regards to Simone de Beauvoir's The Second Sex. Um, we also had some folk uh, donate to the Solstice fundraiser, which is happening right now. Um, we're, we're raising money to keep the lights on here, paying rent. I hear and rent is just is just a thing right now um actually i want to say something about that because it's just it's like 
I I work with an incredible team in my my day job for the nonprofit industrial complex, and um, so many of my coworkers are in some state of housing insecurity, and this is not like this is this is, this is like a, a like a I don't know like a, a decently paying job. You know, I'm not exactly sure what what decently paying job means anymore, considering like. A headline I saw the other day was like, is 100K a year even enough anymore? And I'm like, I wish I would even get close to 100K a year. It's like, that seems so out of my reach. Um, and the fact that like we're, we're talking about, is that even enough to, to live with the cost of living right now? Is just, it, it blows my mind. Um, and it's it's so messed up to me that, that like so many of my, my coworkers... Um, are, are in this this state of of housing insecurity and it's is frustrating because I feel, I feel like everyone everyone deserves a place to to call home a place to live they deserve shelter um, as one of their most basic forms of, of protection and that's why we live in a society why we organize like this um, as a as society is so that we can protect each other we can protect our community um, but everything these days is just so, uh, just, we've really gotten, gotten wrapped up in the, the, the cult of individuality, right? It's all like, what's mine? Um, and we're, we're here to live with each other. We're here to live in, in a community together. Um, I don't know how I got onto this topic again. Uh, it's, <laughs> if you're dealing with housing insecurity at this moment, um, instead of submitting a confession about it, why don't we just start making um, some noise about that? You know, what if we, what if we just like uh, collectivize and organize together um, and get some like radical action done um, because this isn't, this isn't good. I, I'm not a fan. Um, before I came on to, we, uh, my, my good pal Meredith of Sad Girl Power Hour, was playing a song, um, I think it was a Brandy Carlisle song, it was called The Mother, and I would love to share my review of a movie all about motherhood that I watched last night. Um, it is not, I, I do not recommend this movie, except for maybe the first 45 minutes of it. More specifically, a scene in this movie. Um, so if you if you skip to around the 40 minute mark, I should actually tell you what the name of the movie is. Um, I think it's called Bad Mom's Christmas. Um, and so the song that my Capel Meredith was playing uh, was reminded me that I have to talk to y'all about this movie. So released in 26, 2017, it's called A Bad Mom's Christmas sequel to the 2016 movie Bad Moms. Starring Catherine Hahn, Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, Susan Sarandon, Christine Baranski, Justin Hartley, Cheryl Hines, etc. So, like, well, it's just, just a great cast of, of ladies, you know? It's really repping the, the female gender. Um, and this movie is a Christmas movie, and I didn't feel like thinking at all last night, so I put it on. I was like, motherhood, yeah, let's let's see what what uh, we had to say about motherhood. In uh, 2017, um, pre-pandemic, uh, so a Christmas comedy film written and directed by John Lucas and Scott Moore. The plot follows the three moms from the first film, Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, and Katherine Hahn, dealing with their own mothers, Christine Baranski, Cheryl Hines, and Susan Transen, visiting during the Christmas holiday. Um... And like, what to say about this movie generally? Because it's just like, it's not good. Again, I don't recommend it. Uh, it's just, it's got a lot of gender. It's got some like bad body image things. The the moms are like comically mean, or I guess the grandmothers are comically mean to their their daughters. The the main character moms, um, in a way that just kind of seems a little unrealistic. And then they reveal their like their own motherhood trauma and I guess it's like commentary on like uh, generational trauma carrying forward and 
blah, 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 blah. Um, all that is the least interesting part of this movie. The most interesting part of this movie um, happens 40 minutes, approximately 40 minutes in this movie, where um, Catherine Hahn's character, Catherine Hahn, uh, uh, famous in Marvel's WandaVision, we, we loved her in that show. Um, she is, uh, she, she works at a spa and, uh, she has this, this man come in who, gosh golly, if I could really care to remember this guy's name, but like a, like a, the perfect guy kind of archetype. Um, he's like, he's buff. He doesn't have like a, a hair on his, on his chest. Um, he's, he's good looking. He um, he works as an intimate dancer and was formerly a firefighter. <laughs> and he's just like immediately enamored by Catherine Hahn, but also kind of in a really unsettling, um, almost like s- sociopathic kind of way. Like his face just doesn't change much. Like he he he, he maintains just the slightest little smirk throughout this entire scene and so he comes in to the spa and um he would like his intimate parts waxed um by Catherine Hahn she works at a spa um <laughs> and so uh lucky lucky Catherine Hahn she gets to um sexually harass this man <laughs> um in a very inappropriate way um but you know like i guess he's into it maybe the consent lines here very blurry don't like it um but it is it it is the only thing that gives this movie three and a half stars for this like one five minute scene (laughs) because um it is played he he plays it so straight as he's getting waxed um in presumably uh, a very intense a lot of nerve endings in that area um, and the sound effects of her like uh, uh, ripping the wax strips off are like, it's is it's good. Props to the SFX team who who did the sound design for this film because not only is like the wax ripping sound effect just brutal, um, but also there's a sound effect of him um, when he has to like move move some stuff out of the way for her to get the wax strips in. Um, and I don't think I can say more than that. But uh, if you do watch watch that scene, uh, you will know what I'm talking about. And so every time she pulls a wax strip off, um, he he does not flinch. He does not move. He maintains dead eye contact with her. But he does he does just like his his little smirk just like increases just a little bit. Just like just a little, just a little. I can't I, you don't see it on the radio but it's like it's is perfect it is the best acting I'm sure of 2017 it's not like it doesn't say to me that he's enjoying the process but like like this is so run of the mill to him this experience and it's just like I was bursting out laughing she does it like three or four times and this little smirk comes back every time after. He doesn't say anything. She doesn't say anything. They maintain eye contact. She's like, just like so enamored by this man um, who's just immediately in love with her. Um, and he's just, he's a psychopath. Um, so a bad mom's Christmas. <laughs> um, watch it for that five minute scene exclusively. Um, you can find it streaming, I'm sure, somewhere. I don't know. I don't know where I watched it. Um, I watched it in a 100% legal manner. So um, make sure that you also watch it in a, a, a legal way. Uh, oh my God. Also, I'm just learning now that there was, there was supposed to be another sequel um, called Bad Moms Moms where the three grandmothers were supposed to re- reprise their roles. Um, but it was it was perpetually delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and no news has come out since. So uh, yet another victim of cancel culture, bad moms, moms with Susan Sarandon, just, just 
bad stuff. Um, I think I think we should we should see it. Um, I, I think we should make whoever out there has the rights to this movie make the sequel Bad Moms Moms with Susan Sarandon um, and Christine Baranski and Cheryl Hines. So that's uh, that's my not quite movie reco for uh, today, but I would love to um, actually do a fun little, I was thinking so much like, ooh, I should do like a top 10, but then I don't feel like I've actually watched enough 2023 movies this year to do a top 10. So I was thinking of what I could possibly do like mother's recommendations on and like I could maybe do video games if anyone's interested in that. I don't think I can do TV shows because I also don't watch a lot of TV. I watch like two episodes of something and I give up on it. I, I have a I have a very refined palate. My taste is impeccable. And so just, just no run of the mill. Um, unless it's Bad Mom's Christmas, in which case, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I was thinking I could do Mother's Top Stationery of 2023. Um, and if you're a stationary nerd, um, you're welcome. If you're not, you're welcome. You will be after this. Uh, fun fact about me is I love stationary. Uh, so get excited for that. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just like scroll through some other songs too. Cause I just, I didn't prepare a music thing for this show. Cause I don't do three shows a week. Um, and I did all of my, my Menti B hits yesterday. Um, so like some, some indie pop rock hits potentially. Does that sound good to you? Um, I actually don't recognize any of the names on this place. It's really weird accessing someone else's, uh, like playlists. You, you learn a lot about them, but this is like the studios playlist. So, um, in Magic the Gathering, when you, you open up a, a booster pack, you maybe get one or two cards that you really love and want, and then the rest is called chaff. And this is just a lot of chaff playlists. Um, n- no shade. I, I guess that technically was a lot of shade. So um, I'm just... I apologize. That would be much easier to actually find a song that looks interesting that I know in here. And... There's just like nothing. Rocking vibes. Is Hosier good? Oh, look, Boy Genius. Great. Let's play Not Strong Enough by Boy Genius from their album, The Record. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the show, everyone. That was Mistakes by uh, Sharon Van Eaton. Eaton? Eaton? Uh, great, great artist. Before that was um, Boy Genius, not strong enough. And uh, if you are, if you're joining in from one of the many uh, multiple streaming locations that I am attempting to stream on, my apologies. Uh, it's a test. But right now we're running our uh, fourth annual Solstice fundraiser. And if you would like to donate to that in support of local programming, um, which is me, I'm local programming. Hello. My name is Mother Milkweed, and I have a show Wednesday nights at 11 p.m. called Postmortem, and a show called The Seditious Theater of Love uh, Friday evenings at 6 p.m. They're both an hour long. You can join those on cjucfm.com or by listening to Local White Horse Radio 92.5 FM. And uh, if you like hearing my voice, um, then you can uh, support this voice, the space that this voice is broadcast on, by sending an e-transfer to donate at cjucfm.com. I know we have lots of um, donations so far, so that's like very exciting to me. Um, Last, yes, yesterday I got, I got a donation live and someone uh, made a request of a confession from me. So if you want a, a confession live from me, you can submit that uh, on uh, my website, milkweed.productions slash M-M-S-T-O-L. And there's a little one on this confessions form there. And uh, you can just turn it around on me. Ask me something. Yesterday, uh, someone asked me a really good and hard question. And that was, um, what is something that I genuinely think that I have done that no one else has ever done before? Um, and that was a real pickle. Um, let me tell you. I, I have no idea what I, I, I also think that like the, the permutations of what is possible in this world are actually finite. Um, and that like the original creations of an, of another person will manifest themselves in many different ways, uh, throughout the time and space of, of the cosmos. Um, so I chose a kind of a non-answer, which was, um, I think that like the, the connections that I share with those that I love and that I'm intimate with, um, the the, um, the 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 impact that I've had on those people's lives, um, I believe are the 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 thing that only I can do, um, which is like obvious because it's my impact on their lives, but. Um, that doesn't make them any less important to me or them. And the impact that they've had on my life is truly special. No matter if it was like, if, if I believe that it was maybe not the best, um, it allowed me to grow and learn and become a, a better person. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for that. Um, yeah, you're all, you're all wonderful. And I, I love you all so much. Um, anyway, that being said, uh, thank you so much for joining. Please donate to CGUC FM. Keep us going. Pay the rent, um, by e-transferring us at donate at cjucfm.com. Some of the things that this will go to, um, other than paying rent and keeping the lights on are like, you know, gear upgrades. We love gear. Um, maybe a slightly more exciting um (laughs) internet plan (laughs) no i'm kidding it's actually apparently it's really good internet um i shouldn't i shouldn't mock the internet though it is paid by it is it is the 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 starlink internet so the the daddy musk wi-fi um and my opinions of elon musk are not the opinions of cjec um but i'm just not i I'm, i'm gonna say allow me to have my own opinion um, I'm not a fan of Mr. Elon Musk. Um, there's actually a really great, uh, like, multi-article kind of thread on um, the website called The Verge, which is like a lot of like tech news. 
Um, it was called like the year Twitter died and it's like collecting a bunch of like crazy things that like Elon Musk did um, <laughs> to Twitter throughout the year as well as just in his like other spheres. Um, and it's a really good read if you are interested in that. So I, I highly suggest checking that out. Um, I think it's it's well well worth it. Um, I'm also learning that like my stream has definitely freezed on my own channels so my apologies for that um i'm gonna go to a, a significantly less exciting camera um less high quality and a, not a great angle of my face but then at least you get to see my face so um thank you for bearing with me i also stream video games by the way uh on my twitch channel <laughs> so if you want to get to know me better uh, in the new year, I'll be returning to that, and I'll be streaming such exciting games on my PlayStation 5, which is, fun fact, bright pink, and uh, I am I love it very much. I'm a big gamer fan. One of my favorite games of the year um, was actually uh, Alan Wake 2, and I played some of that, the, the music from that game on one of my shows a few weeks back, because it's so good. Um, Alan Wake 2 is, is like a horror thriller video game and uh, it tells the story of a writer who um, through their kind of uh, existence in this purgatory darkness area can influence reality with his writing um, and the studio that makes this game they're so smart they're so clever they're just like they like blend live um, film and, and scenes that they've recorded with, with actors, human actors. Um, and they blend that with like video game gameplay as well as like music in, in world music. They have like bands that they've gotten to like make songs for um, this game. And there's like text elements. And so like you really feel like you're inhabiting the world of this game by, by playing it. Um, because you just like you, you fall so fully into it through all of these different kind of blended media. Um, so Alan Wake 2, highly recommend that. Um, I think you would really enjoy it if you're a fan of video games. Um, if you're not a fan of video games, I would love to tell you about my favorite stationery of the year. Um, I love to share the things that excite me and that I'm passionate about. Um, someone told me that I was like a neuro spicy trait and I'm like, yeah, that tracks. But um, some of the, I love stationery because it just, it makes me, I, I love to write and I love to make notes and I make a lot of notes and I use a lot of lists um, th to kind of keep track of the many different things in my life. Um, so it really matters to me that like the things that I am using, the implements I'm using to make those lists and, and write, um, it, it makes it feel better to do those things. So um, my top stationary recommendations of 2023 um, are going to start with a planner that I had just bought for the year 2024, but it starts in the month of November. So I have already started using it. And it is the Jibun Techo um, planner. Um, Jibun Techo is a uh, Kokuyo brand planner. Uh, mine is bright pink. Um, the exciting thing about this planner is it has a lot of space for um, kind of like uh, additional information and prompts. And at the, the front half of this planner and at the back half of this planner are these two little inset, insert notebooks that are in addition to the actual core yearly planner. And um, they're called like the life and uh, I believe the the note book, <laughs> the notebook. Um, and in the, the first one, the life uh, notebook, which is my favorite, it contains like things like anniversaries, um, information that you would normally transfer over from one planner to another that's kept on an annual basis that just recurs every year. Um, and that's including like wishes um, that you have or like um, there's a fun section that I really love that like situates the year and then your age at that year. And then like you can mark down like the events that happened in your life within that year. Um, but also like in the second column is like world events that happened 
um, that year at that age that you were. And this one was very exciting for me because as I started to like look up world events, I was remembering all the just the wacky things that happen in our world and like choosing which one to mark on that month of that year. But then comparing us to like what was happening in my life at that time is the first time I've ever done this activity. Um, and, you know, I make so much more sense to myself now <laughs> seeing the things that were happening as I was living in this world. Um, it felt like um, like I was a conspiracy theorist, like drawing lines I'm like, oh, my God. And then that that was the year that o- Obama was elected. And um, and then like the year I was I was born was like the sarin gas attacks in Japan, um, which, yeah, definitely had an impact on my life. <laughs> Maybe not directly. Um, that one is just obviously I was not of a of a ma- mindscape to know that that happened, um, but worth a look into actually if you're a fan of like cults history. Um, Japan has a really interesting history of, of cults that I would definitely recommend looking into, um, especially Am Shinkyo. Uh, a lot of their tactics I think are used with like cult indoctrination um, used in North America today. So. Things like uh, QAnon use a lot of cult-like indoctrination tactics um, that Am Shinkyo was like a, I hate to say that they were like a, a pioneer in, but um, they definitely seem to have done it first. Um, so check that out uh, if you, you want to get into <laughs> Japanese cults. Am Shinkyo and Shoko Asahara. Um, anywho, back to stationary. So the Jibun, Techi, J- Jibun Techo... Um, Kokuyo yearly planner really good everything's in like columns there's pages for the weekly with like task lists on the side um for every week and it just like really flows with the way that that my brain works and lots of like room and other pages for like additional information um such as like what I would like to do this year and the next year uh so really good um if you're just a fan of notebooks um as i am and if you keep like collecting notebooks uh but you never really fill them up or you fill them up too fast then uh, i would recommend the kuru fit uh binder by uh maruman the kuru fit maruman binder is it's is so beautiful it's got like a frosty um kind of soft binder front and back uh, and you can add pages to it or remove pages to it. So my, my favorite thing about this is that like when I, I take it with me everywhere I go, but I have a lot of different places where that needs to go. Um, so it, I kind of see it as like an inbox where I just like, I take it with me everywhere and I take the notes that I need to take, but then I can remove that page and then bring it somewhere else, um, and put it into like a different binder or notebook or whatever, et cetera. Um, and then refill it as needed. Um, they make a, a small version of this that's like the size roughly of an index card. And that is the um, the Marumont Into One Plus, um, which is like perfect pocket sized. Um, so for the for the, the note takers out there that take a lot of notes, um, the Marumont Kuru Fit Binder, just mm-mm, perfect. And the uh, Marumont Into One Plus, also perfect. And then um, I'll give you a pen reco too, and then we'll go to some music. Cause like I think there's like a some band playing next uh, at the next hour, um, so this is very exciting. Um, uh, the, <laughs> if you hear the the, the noises <laughs> in the studio, um, uh, yeah, there there it's there's gonna be some live music for you coming up next. That's uh, very exciting. Look forward to that. Anyway. I'm going to play a song and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a moment to set up without having to worry about making too many noises. Um, but again, I also just didn't prepare a playlist ahead of time. So um, F- Florence and the Machine? Let's, let's play some Florence. She's, she's cool, right? Uh, the song Free off the album Dance Fever.
Keep